You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Never here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's some of you man with the gaming drag today. I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Nevin. So y'all, before we jump into it, I just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up. We've got bronze tier for five dollars, silver tier for ten dollars, and uh, gold tier for fifteen dollars, respectively. And we all let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm chain, you were up, and let's go. Alrighty. There we go, okay. Speaking of the Falcon, I'll have to go check on him. He looked better last night, but the attack seems to have affected him much more than me. Maybe I should have asked him to come with me. A walk through the streets would have done him some good, too. I don't know, this kind of trauma is complicated to deal with. I have to take care of myself, too. Maybe Gillian was right. A little time just enjoying life in the city might be the best thing for relaxing. Right now, I need to clear my head. Just keep moving. Don't think about anything. Let your paws carry you through the streets. I close my eyes, but I might run into someone. Let's not do that. I don't know exactly how much time I spend walking, but not that it really matters. I have a lot of time on my paws anyway, so... I don't stop until I get in front of a truly interesting building. A temple stands in front of me, its spire rising high into the sky, topped by the twelve-pointed star, symbols of the symbol of the gods. The rest of the building is, as always, when it comes to sacred places, quite sober. Dark stone walls and wooden doors without any fancy decoration. The gods are not interested in the material, only in the, only in the spiritual represented by our faith, and it shows. Not that it's hard to have faith, it's not, it's not like they brand each of us to remind us of their existence. However, there is something unique about the Temple of Frostfang. In the entire kingdom, it is the one and only one devoted to the entire pantheon. Most of the others merely serve two or three gods. The biggest one I saw was dedicated to eight of them. The forgetful ones, on the other hand, well, they only have an altar here in the capital. And to be honest, I'm damn curious to see what this altar looks like. New word in the notes. Uh, how do you access the- oh, notes, okay. Forgetful ones. The four gods never branded anyway. We never branded anyone, and about whom the least is known. Tess, Nevin, Manasa, and Kilithan. Gazal. Our neighbors to the east and probably the most powerful nation in Telson. Their empire is huge and ruled mostly by reptiles and lizards, lizards of all kinds. We get along much better with them than the Makad. Than, than with Makad, okay. Usually it's marked with the brand of the god it honors, so how, how do you represent a god when he hasn't branded anyone yet? Only one way to find out. It's time for me to pay a little visit to our gods, and then I can take the opportunity to ask them to grant me my brand. It doesn't work so far, but I'm not risking anything by trying. Near the front door, I can see four priests talking. For all the respect I have for the clergy, I've always found their formal attire a bit ridiculous. Not necessarily the dark blue tunic itself, although very simple, it gives the wearer a certain elegance and authority. No, no, the problem is the holes in their clothes. Priests have a duty to show their brand in a visible way, not only, to, uh, huh, sorry about that. not only to honor their god, not only to honor their god, but also so that we can quickly know who they are honoring. This sometimes results in, shall we say, complicated situations. I once saw a priestess of Huri whose brand was on her left buttock. I don't think I've ever come across anyone who spent that much time sitting or leaning against the walls. I wonder if the fact that she manipulated ice-cold water had anything to do with it. For the notes. Huri, goddess of water, her brand is a triangle pointing downwards. It controls not only water, but also ice and snow, as well as the ability to transform their state. It's often quite pretty to look at. Four males in front of me were, fortunately for them, luckier. The largest of them, a Malamute, had his brand imprinted on his face. It was a long rectangle filled with curved lines on the left side of his muzzle. A priest of Garain, god of the earth. Next to him, a, he a beaver priest of... Marani... Marania? Marani? Marani simply cut off the entirety of his left sleeve exposing his arm, covered in lines representing rambles, the symbol of life. They're both listening to what appears to be a debate between a mouse, exposing his shoulder branded by a Larry and a fox, also missing a sleeve while bearing the brand of life. Goddess of life, but really goddess of plants. Her brand takes the form of a flower or brambles. I've always had trouble with the idea. Besides, I have a complex history with her. Interesting. When I step forward, the beaver seems to quickly apologize to his companions before coming toward me. Great. Absolutely great. Second y'all, is water time. Of all the gods, it had to be a representative of Marani who came to talk to me. Smile, Eloi, and be polite. Whatever you think of the goddess, it's not the priest's fault. Hello, and welcome to the Temple of the Twelve. Can I help you? Hi, and uh, no thanks, I'm fine. I'm just passing by, and I was just taking a look. A very nice brand, by the way. 
Very nice brand? What the fuck am I saying? The beaver doesn't seem bothered by my answer. May the gods be praised. Well, thank you very much. Feel free to visit the temple in that case. And you can pay homage to your god, of course. My god? I'm still waiting for one of them to brand me before I consider praying to a god. That said, there's no need to start a debate on the subject. Just smile and nod. I'll do it. Have a nice day. Have a nice day, too. With a final nod, he returns to his companions. I wonder why he came to me like that. I guess I must have looked, lo looked lost, or maybe he spotted me when I was looking at their brands. Anyway, it's time to see what this temple has in store for me. With a sure stride, I, s I step forward and open the door, ready to be dazzled by the splendor of the interior. To be immediately brought back to reality, the temple is very sparsely decorated and excessively quiet. At most, I can hear a few whispers coming from the twelve side alcoves, one for each god. The central aisle is filled with wooden benches with with simple white cushions. At least people are sitting comfortably when they pray, which is always a plus. Considering where I am, the place seems strangely unpopulated. About a dozen or so people are present, at most. I guess the people of the capital are more religious at home and less at the temple. Or maybe it's almost noon and people are more interested in eating than praying. It's a non-negligible possibility. Curious about the layout of the building, I go, I go forward to take a look at the altars placed in the alcoves, seeking to see how the deities are arranged in relation to each other. I quickly realize that they have kept it simple. Six altars are placed on one side and six on the other, with the center aisle separating them. Each altar thus faces another. Argon of the Everlasting Fire faces Huri of the Flowing Water, just as Garan opposes her brother, Tessel, the Ariel. Just behind them, Lustra and Ilaria, Shadow and Light, are facing each other. Their altars are more or less what I expected, a simple stone table carved with their brand and a large bowl for offerings. There's no representation for the there's no representation of the gods. It's Hurry, Garan. God of the Earth, his brand is a rectangle. It makes rocks move and stuff like that. It's also the brand of that jerk Sven. Let's see. Lastra, goddess of the shadows. Her brand is usually a line of stripes. A line or stripes. We have the most powerful user of this brand in our kingdom, King Aeon. Interesting. Tessel. God of the wind. His brand is a series of lines that end in a loop. It controls not only wind and thunder, but also sound, which is why it's sought after by musicians. After all, we don't know what they look like. I guess they're shy or very ugly. Second, y'all. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. It's not water time just yet. Okay. After all, okay, where did that? Okay. It is, however, the next pair of gods that interests me the most. To my left, I can see the altar of Morani. It's all my right. It should be the first of the forgetful ones. Tess, god of death. Still curious to see what the place of worship of a god without a brand looks like, I step forward to peek, and, again, nothing too original. Let's see... Tess. God of death, the one we all meet sooner or later. He welcomes us into his kingdom where we remain forever with the people who love us. Sounds like heaven. <laughs> There's the same stone table with the bowl as in the other alcoves, but instead of, carving a car instead of a carving of the god's brand, his name is engraved directly into the rock. As is often the case with us Frostians, we keep things simple and effective. Now that I have my answer, now that I have my answer, my interest in the remaining four altars is greatly diminished. The Rockars one will have a carving of his brand, while the three remaining forgetful ones will simply have their names on theirs. Rockar. Oh, Kelothan. The god of the hunt. And that's about all I know about him. Well, that's what most people know about him. He doesn't have a brand. We don't have any idea what he does. We just know that he exists, and that's about it. Wow, that's a long list of possible things. Anyway, water time, y'all. Alright. With a sigh, I prepare to leave. After all, I still need to eat and have time to digest before I meet Melbjorn, Melbjorn in the training room. Before I turn around completely, however, I see something that makes me decide to stay a little longer. In the last alcove on the left of the central aisle, there is someone praying. A priest, judging by his outfit. According to the logic of the layout, he, he should be kneeling at the altar of Nama of Minasa or Nevin, and that seems strange to me. God. Minasa, goddess of the mind. She is supposed to cure madness and soothe troubled minds. No brand, so no powers associated to it either. Nevin, god of time with no time to spare for us lowly creatures. Huh. Or so you believe. I've never seen anyone pray to the goddess of mind or the god of time, and I don't think they have a priest. After all, you have to bear the brand of the gods to represent them, and those two have never branded anyone. I'm telling myself that one day, my curiosity will get the better of me. I step into the unknown. I won't understand what's going on there. It's probably nothing serious, nothing mysterious, but I can't help it. I have to check. 
and for once it seems that my curiosity is justified. If the tunic of my mysterious stranger indicates to me that he is indeed a priest, the rest of his outfit leaves me perplexed. A scarf of the same blue fabric is wrapped around the worshipper's head, completely enveloping him and concealing him from the view of others. From where I stand, I can see no opening exposing his brand. I walk as quietly as I can, paying attention only to the only to the anth only to the anthrican in front of me. So much so that my paws knocks over a pot sitting next to me, it's next to one of the one of the benches in the aisle. Well done, Eloi. Always so good at hiding your presence. You're not very stealthy for a rabbit. I attempt an apologetic smile and oh. You're not very stealthy for a rabbit. I attempt an apologetic smile as I scratch the back of my head, looking away from the priest who has stood up to face me, an amused tone in his voice. Even now, I'm unable to tell what exact species he belongs to because of his scarf. A dog, perhaps? Looks like a canine. Anyway, I have to answer him, and I also have to apologize for sneaking up on him. You'd be surprised how often I'm told that, and I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, I was just... Curious to see someone praying to, the, to a forgetful god. You'd be surprised how often I get told that. His friendly tone immediately relaxes me. I feel like I've managed to piss off half the people I've talked to since yesterday. It's nice to have someone with the opposite reaction. You must admit that it is uncommon to see someone praying to them, and your outfit is a little uncommon too. There's a simple solution to this riddle, young rabbit. I am the priest dedicated to these four gods and my brand is on my muzzle, so I hide it out of respect for them. I didn't know that they had priests. Probably because as far as I know, I am the one and only priest of the forgetful ones in this kingdom. It seems that they don't attract many people. I don't see why anyone would pray to a god who has forgotten the existence of his creation. If they really cared, they would offer us their brand just like the others. That's what everyone seems to think indeed. I have another interpretation, though. If you have some time, I can explain why I think they are misnamed. He goes to sit on one of the benches and beckons me to come sit next to him. I have some time to listen to him. The question is, do I want to? What to do? Yeah, listen to him. Eh, I don't really have much better to do right now. Besides, I have to admit I'm pretty curious to see what this priest has to say to me. With a smile, I come and sit next to him, ears turned in his direction in order to listen carefully. I suppose I can spare you some of my time. I'm really curious to know why to know why the world why the whole world would be wrong about the forgetful ones. A small chuckle escapes from behind the scarf concealing the priest's face. In that case, I'll do my best not to waste this precious time you're giving me. Let's see. Nevin, Tess, Manasa, Kelethan, Time, Death, Mind, and Hunt. After Teslin was created, they would have forgotten about it, abandoning us in the process and refusing to offer us their brands. Clicking y'all. At least that seems to be accepted as a truth by everyone. And that's perfectly understandable. After all, it explains why we don't have any brands of time or of time or mind. So far, nothing new, everyone. So far, nothing new. Everyone knows that. I guess there's a but that should be coming. But. Heh, <laughs> I knew it! I believe that in truth it is the exact opposite. I think these gods are the ones who love us the most and are acting for our well being. What? I was expecting him to try to put a different spin on this story, but this seems a bit extreme. They ignore us. They refuse to brand us. How can they be the ones who love us the most? My confusion must be obvious, since the priest is chuckling. I suppose further explanation is necessary. It would be more than welcome, yes. It's not like it's a completely opposite idea from what the rest of the world believes. Indeed. I could have phrased that a little bit better. But is that really what you believe? It doesn't make sense to me. I'll explain it. Be patient, young rabbit. Well, let's start with a question, if you don't mind. What exactly are brands? Oh, well, everyone knows that. The symbol of our gods applied to our bodies. They allow us to channel some of their power. That is the literal description, yes. However, it's much however, it's much more than that. It's a direct connection with the deity, but also a responsibility, a duty, and a weight on our shoulders. I'm not sure I follow. Which god has branded you? It would be clear with an example. Ah, that question. I suppose I should have seen it coming. I sigh and shrug, looking away. None. I still haven't received in my brand. Really? You look old enough to me. I guess the gods have a good reason to make me wait, but why do you ask? I was hoping to use your brand as an example, but I guess I can do otherwise. Let's keep it simple if you don't mind. As I said, a brand is a gift, but also a duty. Let's take a chosen Marani for as an example. The control of nature and the ability to heal are great gifts. I will never say otherwise, but it's also a great responsibility. Once they learn to heal, they can't stand aside if they come across an injured person. They are compelled to help, to use their power. The eyes of everyone, especially of their god, is upon them. I wish he had used a different example, but I think I see what he's getting at. 
I understand the idea. Oh. All right, guys and gals, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. If you super thanks or if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Don't forget to check out that Patreon, y'all. Bye-bye.